Hi, I'm Graham Mossman from Exasol, and today I'm going to walk you through a practical example of the use of Skyline on an Exasolution version 5 database. I covered the theory behind Skyline in detail in a previous video, but I'll give you the one minute version of that presentation before we start the practical. If you want a deeper dive into the theory, then do please check out the previous video. The class of problems we're dealing with here are referred to as multi-criteria decision making. In simple terms, we want to make a choice, but there's more than one way in which a choice can be considered good. Illustrated here by three good cars that have their strengths and weaknesses, and no computer could ever choose the best. They're just good in such different ways. You could, however, get the computer to choose you a shortlist, and this is where Skyline comes in. Here's a more grown-up example where the criteria of the decision are risk and return. Some funds are low risk, some are high return, and there's no best combination of risk and return. It depends pretty much on your attitude at the time. To form a shortlist, we can remove the obviously wrong candidates that are worse in all ways than some other candidate. We are left with a set of data points on the edge of the graph that form a signature skyline shape. In this example, we end up with a set of funds that provide an optimal return for a given level of risk, and so only these are worth investigating in detail. The other funds are worse in all ways than at least one fund in this set. My practical example involves German power stations. Imagine I want to choose a source of power for my company, and I don't know whether I need a relatively small power station close to home or a larger one that's further away. To help me with that decision, there's a publicly available data set of all of the power stations in Germany on the internet. We're going to imagine that my company is in Nuremberg. As you can see, there are a range of yellow and orange solar stations pretty much everywhere, some blue wind farms outside of town, and some biomass, gas and hydro stations. I have downloaded the data and loaded it into a table called Energy Map. There's a lot of information here about each of the power stations, but we are most interested in the power output and the GPS coordinates. From these coordinates, we can calculate how far away the power is by using one of Exasol's excellent geospatial functions. The first thing to check is whether there's a power station right where we need it. If there were, the demo would be pretty much over straight away. But there isn't such a power station, and so we need to consider the trade-off between big power stations far away and little power stations nearby. As I explained before, the issue with multi-criteria decisions is that you can't solve them directly by computer, but you can get the computer to build you a shortlist. My first attempt uses a WHERE clause to select only big power stations that aren't too far away, and very close power stations that aren't too small. One problem we notice here is that this completely ignores middle-sized power stations and those that are in the middle distance. Some of these might be a good solution for us, so this is not a satisfactory way to build a shortlist. My second attempt is to calculate a score based on a function of distance and power. There is no universally accepted formula for this, so I've had to go with my best guess. And it does give me a short list of options that at first sight looks pretty good. But wait a minute. Look at these two biomass power stations in the middle of my short list. The second one is both further away and less powerful than the first. There is absolutely no reason to choose the second of these options over the first one, and so it doesn't belong on the short list. We say in the language of Skyline that the first option dominates the second. It's better in every way. So let's stop messing around and finally use the Skyline function that is new and exclusive to Exasolution 5. As you can see, to use it, all we need to do is to add a preferring option to the select statement. In this case, we prefer low distance and high power output. You can see that the query runs quickly. Our algorithm is very efficient and runs in memory and in parallel across all of the nodes. Each of the options in this result set is an optimal trade-off between distance and power, ranging from a massive wind power station that's over 400 kilometers away, right down to a tiny gas-powered station that's practically next door. It would then be up to us to make the final decision, either based purely on distance and power, or maybe on one of the other features. Maybe we have a preference for green solar energy, or we might prefer working with one or other of the power station operators. 
just to finish off the demo, I can attempt to get the same result using standard SQL. The problem here is that you need a horrible where not exists piece of logic that means that the query will run slowly even on a great SQL database like ExaSolution 5. I'll just kick off the script and leave it running for a few seconds just to indicate that using Skyline was not just a little bit faster but much much faster. The difference in run times is even more obvious when you scale up the query to billions of values and you start considering more than two criteria in the decision. So that's the demo. What I've shown you is just a simple example of how Exasol's exclusive new Skyline functionality allows you to tackle decision problems where there are multiple dimensions of goodness and no one best answer. These queries were previously not computable, but now they are thanks to our Skyline functionality, which runs efficiently, parallel and in memory. I'd like to thank you for your attention, and I hope I've inspired you to find out more about ExaSolution 5 and the new Skyline functionality. You can find further details on our website www.exasol.com. Thanks for watching.